السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دی سیریز آف لیکچرز آن ایڈوانسڈ کمپیوٹر آرکیٹیکچر لاسٹ ٹائم وی ڈسکسڈ دی بیسک کانسیپٹس آف کیش میموری کیش میموری از اے فاسٹ میموری ویری کلوز ٹو دی سی پی یو اینڈ اٹ کنیکٹس دی مین میموری ٹو دی سی پی یو وی ڈسکسڈ فور امپارٹنٹ پرابلمس اور فور کویشچنس وچ are to be sorted out with reference to the organization of cash. First important thing is where to place the blocks. So the information from the main memory comes to cash in the form of blocks and it is passed on to CPU in the form of words. So when a block comes in, how to place it? We discussed different, three different methods of placing these blocks or block placement or mapping techniques. The direct mapping, associative mapping and set associative mapping. Now the next important thing is that cache memory, the capacity of cache memory is less than that of the main memory. Now in that case when the blocks have been placed into cache, we need to identify. So the block identification is the problem. We discussed the hardware techniques, the circuit, which would identify and tell us how to find out a block or position of the block in the cache memory. Now, the next question was that if a block which is desired or when CPU sends a request to read and that particular word is not available in the block which are already present in the cache, then it is a situation of a miss. So in case of a miss, a block, an appropriate block where the required data is present has to be brought into the cache from main memory. And there would be some block which has to be replaced. So the replacement technique would be required. And we discussed two important aspects. First one, we said it could be done randomly. Or secondly, there could be the management so that the least frequently blocks could be thrown away and the new block could take place of that particular block. Lastly, we said that the writing technique, so if there is a write request from CPU, then how do we write this data? Does it go straight to the main memory or does it stay for some time in the cache till such time we pass it on to the main memory? We discussed two techniques. We said one is called write through. That means when the data is written into cache, at the same time it is also uh, written to the main memory. So there would be two copies simultaneously, one staying in the cache and the other one in the main memory. Now the other technique is to keep the data in the cache till such time that it has been updated and we need to place it to the main memory. And this could, be, this could be maintained by looking at additional control bits or we say that it would be right back. We hold the data back into cache till such time that we have to replace that particular block where the data has been written. Now, we discussed also two important issues regarding the block length and then the question of reducing the misses. Now the two important concepts were that of locality. Now the locality could be the temporal locality or it could be just a locality for instruction. We took an example and said that usually if we have for example an array and we have fetched the first element of the relay in high probability, probability we would also need the next element 
from the array. So based on this concept, we just keep the block or the blocks into the memory so that we do not need frequent interchange of data, frequent, frequent interaction between the main memory and the cache. And that's why cache works and the concept of cache is established. Today we are going to discuss the concept of virtual memory. Now virtual memory is a concept which could be uh, thought of uh, similar to what we discussed in cache. This could be a cache which works between the main memory and the secondary memory. Now in the hierarchy of our memory we said that from CPU where we have the highest level of memory in the form of registers we go away to cache then to main memory which is both of these are primarily the semiconductor memories and then comes the magnetic memory usually hard disk is used for the secondary memory and that is where usually program would reside or your data would reside when the program is not running or your CPU is not working or you have not switched on your computer as yet so the data would be in the hard disk and from hard disk when we want to fetch the data into the main memory a similar concept is applied and that is called the virtual memory. So we would like to have the transfer of data from disk in advance to the main memory so that when access is required we do have that data available in the main memory. Now at this point of time it is important to realize that the access time or the time to fetch the data from the secondary memory that is from hard disk, uh, it is pretty slow as compared to that of the main memory or for that cache. I hope you remember from uh, the previous lecture that for the case of cache we could have an excess time of few tens of nanoseconds whereas for the main memory it could be uh, a few hundreds of nanoseconds up to maybe even less. Whereas in the case of a hard disk, the access time could be in milliseconds. So when we are reading data from the hard disk, there are a number of delays involved. The mechanical movement of the arms to a given track or to a desired track and then the uh, rotational de delay to come to a particular position where the data is available, all this together would give us the delay and that delay is much larger as compared to what we have for the semiconductor memories. So therefore it is very nice to have the data available in main memory. So the management of the main memory would be similar to the concept of what we have discussed for the cache. In this case it would be called a virtual memory organized in main memory. So we have pages or we will call segments. We will see later how this is done. We formulate these pages and bring the pages from the secondary memory from the disk into the main memory. Now how this is done? There would be two important aspects. Some parts would be done by the hardware where we have the memory management unit and the second important thing is done through the software and that software is the operating system. So one function of the operating system would be to manage the resources of memory and to organize this virtual memory. We'll discuss that in more detail with the help of some slides. But just notice that we have a memory management unit just next to our CPU, then we have cache then main memory and then we have the disk. This main, the memory management unit would also organize and depending on how do we manage that, the virtual memory would be organized into the main memory. Let us see a simplified block diagram of the relationship between the cache and the uh, main memory 
and the disk and how the corresponding uh, interchange of data takes place. The memory management unit is interposed between the CPU and the physical memory as indicated in this slide. It performs the translations under the control of the operating system. Each memory reference issued by the CPU is translated from the logical address space to the physical address space. Mapping tables guide the translation again under the control of operating system. Since there must be a translation for each memory reference, the translation must be performed by hardware in order to speed up the whole process. The operating system invokes to update the required mapping tables. In earlier computer systems, the memory management unit was implemented as a separate chip. However, the present technology incorporates usually this memory management unit into the CPU chip. So the density has increased and it is possible by elegant design to have the memory management unit as a part of the main CPU chip. Now the important thing now is how to translate the addresses. There are a number of terms used one we call logical address, then we call the virtual address and effective address and finally one could say the physical address. Now uh, mostly one does not care about the definition of different addresses but a little bit of care is required. Talking about the logical address we say that the CPU would generate the logical addresses. Now having these logical addresses would enable the program programmer to have a flexibility. I hope you remember from the earlier lectures the concept of relocatability. So the programmer does not bother about what exact addresses to assign to different instructions or to different arrays for example. So the compiler, for example, could take care of this and generate the logical addresses. However, when the program is being executed at that time, the effective address would be generated. And this effective address is an input to the memory management unit. Then memory management unit as an intermediate step generates what we call the virtual address. And based on this virtual address, we could have a concept of different pages or different segments and then divide the whole address into two fields. You could say the first field represents the page and the other one is the word field. This goes to again the part of the translation process and we translate it to or the memory management unit would translate to the corresponding physical address which would indicate the location of the memory in physical memory or in the secondary memory which could be a hard disk. So starting from the logical addresses which could start for example from zero up to any desired value and then corresponding to that we have a virtual address and then the physical address ultimately representing a location in the physical memory. The concept of virtual memory would provide a number of advantages. The first one is a very simplified addressing scheme. So the programmer would not worry about the exact location of the memory in a physical memory or in a disk. This would be taken care of by the operating system. Now the second important advantage that a programmer would get is that physically a large memory would be available. Now even though the memory, physical memory might be limited, it might be for example a few MB, but 
we could make a part of the hard disk as an extension and give an illusion to the programmer as if he has infinite resources available. Now this concept again as I said is similar to what we have applied in organizing our cache. Now then access control is also simplified. So through the memory management unit again the programmer accesses the cache or let us say CPU gets hold of cache, cache interacts with the main memory, main, main memory interacts with the secondary memory and this data or the complete hierarchy is so organized that the access becomes very simple. Now the virtual memory could be organized in different ways and we'll discuss one by one in a little bit more detail. The first we say the memory management by using segments or segmentation is used. In the case of segments we divide the memory in segments of probably variable length. If we want we could be uh, having it of constant, uh, constant length but it could be varied. I hope you remember from the architecture of Intel processor, there were four registers, segment register, the code segment register, the data segment, the stack segment, and extra segment. These would be used for organizing the virtual memory. We'll see in one of the following examples. But first, let us see the concept of the segmentation or organizing the virtual memory by using the segments in next slide. Although the memory management by segmentation is less common and more common is the paged virtual memory which we'll discuss later on. However, still some machines do use the concept of segmentation. Segmentation allows memory to be divided into parcels or segments of varying size depending upon the requirement. It provides a good conceptual introduction to the following discussion of paging. The slide shows a main memory containing five segments identified by segment numbers. Each segment begins at a virtual address of zero regardless of where it is located in the physical memory. In pure segmented system segments are brought in from the secondary memory as and when needed. Now if we modify then we need to store back these segments into the memory or when we do not require these anymore we send back to the disk memory or the secondary memory. This variability of results in the gap between the segments as you will notice for example, there is a gap between segment 1 and segment 5. This could result in less efficient use of the memory. The addressing of segmented memory is shown in the next slide. Each virtual address arriving from the CPU is added to the contents of the segment base register, which is available as a part of the memory management unit and it, it is translated into a physical address. The virtual address may also optionally be compared to a segment limit register in order to trap and avoid the condition of exceeding a particular allowed address. By maintaining a table of segment bases and segment limits, the operating system can switch processes by switching the contents of the base and limit registers. So in the case of multi-programming when more than one program is running we could have different values of the base registers for different programs. Specifically for Intel 8086 such a technique is used. The 16-bit address is coming from CPU and we place the most significant four bits as zero. 
Now the 16 bit segment register would contain 16 bit data in the most significant bits and the least significant bits would be 0 through a simple adder or through an ALU instruction we add up the 16 bit logical address with the 16 bit base address with a left shift and result would be a 20 bit physical address and this concept is explaining how the segmentation is used in Intel 8086 processor. Let us now consider the management of virtual memory by using the concept of paging. It could be considered as an extension of using segments. However, the size of each page is usually fixed and we will use what is called demand paging. By demand paging we mean that normally the data, the page data is available in the secondary memory and it is brought into the main memory as per requirement and we could have similar placement techniques as we discussed in the case of cache memory. Let us have a look on the concept of manage management by using pages in the next slide. This slide shows the arrangement of pages in virtual, physical and secondary memory. Notice that the virtual pages in the program unit are in linear ascending order. We just call page 0 up to page n minus 1 in the given example. Now as they must be if the virtual addresses are formed by concatenating the page number with the word number. Now the memory management unit maps these pages to pages in the physical memory or if they are not present in the physical memory to a secondary memory as shown by a dotted arrow in the case of our slide. Now some of these pages in the virtual memory may not exist in physical memory but only in the secondary memory. This might be because there is no room in physical memory or because the virtual page has not been accessed so far by a running program and so there has been no request to bring that particular page from secondary memory into physical memory. The paging process is more complex in this particular case as it was in segmentation since there are likely to be greater number of pages present than there would have been the segments because of the smaller average size of the segments. There is only one segment for each program unit in segmented memories. However, we could have arbitrarily large number of pages in the system. The operating system must therefore maintain what is called a paging table that maps virtual memory to physical pages or otherwise to the locations in the secondary memory. Typically there will be a separate page table for each program if a multi-programming environment is utilized. We need to look into the fact that what should be the size of the page. Using a very large size of the page might result in an excessive excess time. In other case, if we have too short a page size, then a number of excesses may be, res may be the result. Now a typical value of the page size could be from 512 bytes up to 8 kilobytes. Now I hope you remember in the case of our uh, discussion with cache memories, we discussed the relationship between the length of the block which in this case would be the size of the page and correspondingly the excess time 
and as the block length or in this case the page size would increase then resultingly we will have more effective use of the virtual memory. However, if the page size is too large then that would also result in a reduced throughput. Now it is important to see how the address would be translated by using the paging scheme. Principally the total address would have two parts. One would indicate the page number. So for a virtual address it would be a virtual page number followed by the second field which would be a word field. Now through the translation process we will come to the resulting address where the page number would be translated through the process. However, the field address, the word address would be concatenated with the translated page number. Let us see this fact in our next slide. This slide shows a simplified mechanism for virtual address translation in a page memory management unit. The process begins in a manner similar to the segmentation process. The virtual address composed of a high order page number and a low order word number is applied to the memory management unit. The virtual page number is limit checked to be certain and to be sure that the page is within the given limits available in the table and if it is, it is added to the page table with a base address and this would yield the page table entry. Now if the limit check fails then a bound exception would be raised and this would interrupt the process. The page table entry contains several control fields in addition to the page field. The control fields may include access control bits, a presence bit, a dirty bit and a one or more use bits. Typically the access control field will include bits specifying read, write and perhaps execute permissions. The presence bit indicates whether the page is currently in the main memory or not. The use bit is set upon a read or write to the specified page as an indication to the replacement algorithm in case a page must be replaced. In the presence bit indicating a hit then the page field of the page table entry will contain the physical page number. That page number is concatenated with the word field of the virtual address and this would yield the physical address where the desired value will be found. If the presence bit signals a miss that is a page fault and this page fault is similar to what we had a miss in the cache then the page field of the page table entry will contain an address in the secondary memory where the page is stored. This miss condition also generates an interrupt. The interrupt service routine will initiate the page fetch from secondary memory and will therefore suspend the uh, requesting process until the page has been brought into the main memory. If the CPU operation is a write hit then the dirty bit is set and the CPU operation during a write miss would correspondingly enable the MMU to begin a write allocate process. The paging would result an, in an unavoidable fragmentation. This would mean that the uh, sum of the pages, particularly the last pages of each process may not be fully used. Now this is unavoidable and would result in the inefficient use or wastage of some part of the memory or that particular page where the data is not fully written. Now 
in the case of virtual memory as we said in the beginning that a number of processes might be uh, running concurrently so for each particular program we want to give a feeling that an infinite memory or at least a complete main memory is available for each program and that is done that is an advantage which we gain out of the virtual memory management let us look into a little bit more detail regarding the process of multi programming or when a number of processes are running together and we have what is called a multi programming environment if there are a number of tasks processes or programs waiting in queue for their turn and cpu needs the attention correspondingly the memory is also shared and through the memory management unit each particular process would get the proper scheduling through the cpu first however the processor's attention is turned to servicing the page fault which indicates a miss the first activity is to save the state of the suspended process this may not be a very simple job since the processor may have been in the middle of an instruction when the page fault occurs in machines such as intel 8086 series the problem can be particularly acute because a single string move instruction may touch thousands of words in any case provision must be made to save all of the relevant processor states before proceeding with the interrupt service routine the processor may save sufficient state to resume execution where it is halt however in case it is not possible then the process has to restart and that particular instruction which was left un incomplete must be started again through the beginning an appropriate scheduling by cpu is extremely important now if there are a number of memory interactions or interaction between the secondary memory and the main memory in such a case a lot of cpu time might be wasted just controlling these transfers and a number of interrupts would occur now a solution to this could be to to provide a direct memory access or dma we'll discuss this dma later on in our topic of ios but at this point of time you could just imagine that in order to avoid the main cpu time we could have a direct link between the main memory and the secondary memory and direct transfer could be provided without the attention of the cpu time so the cpu time could be used more efficiently for other activities nevertheless using dma with the virtual memory might result in complications and in particular having uh, multiple copies of the same page in the main memory and the secondary memory and it should be ensured that the copies placed in two hierarchical system are the same and this would be done through efficient operating system now let us look at the mechanism of the placement and replacement of the pages into the main memory now strategy is similar to what we discussed with reference to cache organization cache management could be utilized whenever there is a miss that means on a request from the cpu to find out a data or to read a word in the main memory and that particular page where the word should be resident is not available one needs to bring in the page from the main memory and if all the previous pages in the main memory are already being utilized 
we need to replace one of the older one and how to replace we discussed two strategies one could be a random strategy that at random we could take away one page out and back to the secondary memory or we could maintain a log and see which particular out of the pages is least frequently used and then it has not been used for quite some time and that could be taken back to the main memory and a new page could take its place. So the replacement strategy would be similar to what we have in the case of cache management. Now identifying a particular page in the memory would require the tables and these tables in some cases might be pretty large and when we want to find out a particular ent entry I hope you remember discussion with reference to the associative placement for the case of cache memory similar process would be here and we have to find out a page and that would be indicated by an entry in the table. Let us look at a simple example. If we have 32-bit virtual address and assume a page size of 4 kilobytes, to represent a page we need 12 bits. So therefore, for the page to be translated, the 20 bits which is 32 minus 12 would be required and how many entries are required in the table now that would be 2 raised to power 20 meaning 1 mega entries. Now if for each entry we require 4 bytes the total memory requirement would be 4 megabytes just to implement this translation table and that is a lot of overhead. How could we avoid such a situation? We could implement through what is called a translation look ahead table and that could be implemented as a cache. Suppose we try to implement that either in the main memory or in the cache or it could also be implemented at the level of registers in the CPU. The concept would remain similar. Let us see at the TLB implementation in the next slide. Now you have noticed that for address translation two memory references are required. One for finding out the page and the second one to finding exact word within the page. Furthermore, since most caches are designed to store physical addresses. The translation from virtual address to physical address must take place before the cache can access it. Now this is an expensive proposition and many techniques have been employed to speed up the process. The most frequently used technique is the translation look ahead buffer we call TLB. The TLB is a small cache normally inside the CPU that stores the most recent page table entry reference that were made in the memory management unit. It contains not only the mapping from virtual to physical address but it also contains a valid, a dirty and protection bit. So a TLB hit allows the processor to go directly from the TLB to the memory. The TLB is usually implemented as a fully associative cache because of the greater flexibility in placement that it affords. The slide shows the operation of a typical TLB. The TLB is searched associatively for a match between the virtual page number of the memory reference and the virtual page number in the TLB. If a match is found we call TLB hit and 
the valid bit is set then the excess control bits are checked and if there is no excess violation the physical page that is mapped to the virtual page is concatenated with the word field and therefore it would result in a physical address which would be used for an access in the main memory. If there is a TLB miss then the page tables are searched for a match. A page table fault indicates that the page is not in the physical memory as before and therefore we need to go to the secondary memory. So far we have discussed the concept of virtual memory, cache and the TLB. Now all these things could be put together and the hierarchy would be built that first of all the search is there in TLB and followed by the search in cache and then followed by the virtual memory access. When we put all these together we could place it in the form of a simple flowchart which is given in the next slide. Let us see a simple explanation of all these things working together. The slide shows a memory hierarchy along with the TLB, page table, cache, main memory and secondary memory. The CPU issues a virtual address. If there is a TLB hit then the physical address is applied to the cache. If there is then a cache hit the cache is accessed. If there is a cache miss at this point of time it is handled as described previously. If there is a TLB miss then the page table is searched. There is a good chance that the page table or a portion of the page table may contain the desired reference. A page table hit results in the generation of a physical address, an update of the TLB and a cache search. A page table miss results in an access of the secondary memory followed by an update of the main memory, the update of the cache and the corresponding page table. The next attempt to access that virtual address will result in an update of the TLB and a normal cache access. The actual memory subsystem in a computer may be quite complex. As we have discussed in CPU we could have a cache implementation followed by a bigger cache then a main memory implemented in the form of DRAM and then we could have a disk which could be just a secondary memory and tape if so required. Now all these elements in the memory subsystem must be geared up together in such a way so that we have an efficient working of the total system. Now this would depend a lot on the workload on computer. Now there could be a number of memory accesses. The total scheduling of this workload is not an easy job and that needs to be done by the operating system. Now how that is done, different ideas could be implemented to make the overall system more efficient. One of these could be to have a separate cache for instructions and data and we could have a corresponding what is called an instruction cache. Now similar to what we have implemented for instruction also we could have a look ahead buffer and similarly for data if a number of arrays are being accessed we could have a data cache and to access a particular entry into the table we could implement it in the form of having a buffer, a look ahead buffer in the main memory or in the cache or in the CPU. Now all this implemented together may 
require a lot of burden and a lot of overhead on the CPU. Now one solution to this could be that there could be uh, interaction or transition or transfer of data between different IOs by hard disk we have an example of IO which could be later extended and instead of first data being passed on to CPU and then to the memory there could be a connectivity between different elements and this connectivity could be provided and is called a direct memory access or a DMA. Now this concept just briefly is indicated in the next slide more details we will discuss in one of the uh, later lectures. This slide illustrates the concept of DMA device which can either issue read and write request to the cache as does the CPU or it can issue these instructions directly to the main memory. For the DMA associated with pages a direct transfer to main memory seems the obvious choice. However, the state of the cache cannot be ignored when a page is replaced. Some line in the page may have been modified and if so, a write back cache may not yet have been written to the main memory. Thus, unless cache is written through, all lines of a page to be replaced must be purged from the cache. For the I.O. not associated with the pages, access through the cache gives I.O. the same view of memory state that the CPU has. However, it has a heavy performance penalty. It competes with the CPU for the address translation mechanism and therefore going directly to the main memory competes with the CPU only on the cache miss. But now IO has an inconsistent view of the memory. Not only is there a problem mentioned before, the outputting old information would also require a write back. If an input operation issued to the main memory which is cached. In the case of a cache management, the difference between the cache and the main memory access time was not that large. However, you should notice that for the secondary memory, when compared to the main memory, the access time difference is excessively large. Now, as an example, for the main memory, if the access time is about 100 nanosecond, the access time for the disk would be in milliseconds. It could be 10 millisecond as an example. Now, this is tremendous. So, therefore, whenever it is possible, one would like to have the information available in the main memory. And that has been made possible by using the concept of virtual memory. Now, in future, one could expect that some other possible mass devices for the storage of information would become available. A lot of research is going in quantum computing and we might have molecules or, or uh, atoms storing the bits of information and therefore a very small chip may be just added as a memory unit and in future we might not use disks at all and maybe not in very far future we have such a possibility. Now, we summarize what we have discussed today. Under the umbrella of our hierarchy, we discussed another step in our sub-memory and that was how to organize a virtual memory. This virtual memory could be considered just as a cache which is uh, organized in the main memory and it is a backup for the secondary memory. So the same pages are available in the secondary memory and are brought in advance to the main memory so that whenever there is a memory 
address requirement or a read write request from the CPU, we have data available in the main memory. And this would just save a lot of excess time. Otherwise, if the data is not available, there is a miss or a page fault as it is usually called, then we want to bring in and place or replace the page into the main memory. Now with this concept of virtual memory, the overall computer system would become more efficient and it would give us a better throughput. I think it's an appropriate moment to stop here for today. Till next time, Allah Hafiz.